Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be talking about inverse TCP flag scanning and analyzing Nmap's output and using the reason flag to understand how Nmap came to a conclusion regarding whether or not a port is open or closed. So that's very important. So when we talk about TCP flags and, and port scanning with Nmap or just scanning in general with Nmap, as we already uh, or as I already explained in the first video that where I covered Nmap or network scanning, I talked about TCP flags, right? And with Nmap, we uh, until now we have only utilized the uh, flags that are used in the TCP three-way handshake, with exception with the exception of UDP, which is a co completely different protocol. But when talking about TCP flags. Uh, as I said, we have only used the uh, SYN, uh, SYN, uh, the SYN, the ACK, and then RST to reset the connection, right? And um, essentially what has been happening with Nmap, uh, Nmap sends a request, and of course this is all part of the three-way handshake. So Nmap usually will send a SYN, and uh, then of course there's a response, and if, if we are talking about the TCP connect scan, Nmap actually completes the three-way handshake and uh, based on the response, it's able to deduce uh, whether or not a port is open. And then also with the stealth scan or the SYN scan, Nmap uh, performs uh, the three-way handshake to uh, to a certain extent, and then it uh, it essentially just resets the connection. Uh, this usually speeds up the scan because you're only waiting for one response, right? Um, that being said, um, when talking about inverse TCP flag scanning, I'm re simply referring to performing things like or using the flags like fin, urge, push, and uh, performing null scans where you don't send any TCP flags, right? So you might be wondering why is this important? Why is, uh, or why is this relevant rather? Why would we send flags that have nothing to do with the TCP, uh, the TCP three-way handshake per se? And that is of course, one of the main reasons is to, to avoid uh, in the detection by intrusion detection systems, because typically intrusion detection systems are uh, are set up to, to actually automatically detect, uh, you know, scans that ob obviously have, have the SYN uh, being sent, which is most scans, whether you're talking about the stealth scan or the TCP connect scan. So in the event you're trying to evade or you're, you're not trying to alert the intrusion detection system, this is a great way of conducting these, um, of conducting a very stealthy scan. Now the thing to understand about inverse TCP flag scanning is uh, you essentially, as I said, there are various scans that Nmap has that allows you to use or to send these flags. Uh, many of you may have heard of them. One of them is the uh, the fin scan, you then have the eczema scan, and then the null scan. So the fin scan is where you're essentially just sending the fin, uh, you're sending a packet with the fin uh, TCP header, right? And then you have the eczema uh, scan, which is which actually sends uh, the fin, uh, urge and push TCP uh, flags uh, all together. And that's why it's called the eczema scan, because you're essentially blowing up uh, the target, uh, like, uh, you know, like a Christmas tree, uh, that's where the analogy comes from. And then of course, a null scan essentially is where you're not sending any TCP flags at all. And then based on that response, uh, your you, Nmap is able to determine whether or not the port is open. So when using inverse TCP flag scanning, if you don't get a response, then that means the port is open, right? If the port is closed, you'll immediately get an RST, or an acknowledgement um, a packet with an acknowledgement header, right? Now, given that uh, we've covered that, let, let's talk about the the first type of inverse TCP scanning, and then we'll also talk about the reason option, and that is the Exma scan, all right? So the Exma scan combines thin, urge, and push flags. So to do that, we simply type in Nmap, and then of course we say uh, scan and X, right? So we're specifying the scan type, and then we type in the IP, so on and so forth. Now, the important thing to realize about in inverse TCP flag scanning is that it does not work on Windows. And that is because Windows uh, TCP IP stack does not support uh, these types of requests, or simply does not know how to respond to them. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we are going to be targeting Unix or Linux boxes, because this is where these scans are extremely effective. So I'll just type in 192.168.1.22. I have a Linux box that's running quite a few services. And let's say I just hit enter, right? And uh, let's see what responses we get. So by default, you can see with the Xmas uh, scan, it uh, gives us uh, 
a bit more information than a typical scan. So first of all, it tells us uh, in terms of the state, the port is either open or filtered, right? Uh, and the reason it, it cannot come to a concrete conclusion is because it's not using relied upon techniques uh, that involve uh, using flags that are, uh, are part of the TCP three-way handshake. Because the response it has to, yeah, of course, it's not getting any any response. So that means the port is open, but it also leaves out, uh, also leaves uh, or includes the probability or the option that the 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 port may be filtered, right? So that means that there might be a stateful firewall, but that's not something we want to cover right now. So that's an XMA scan. If we run a fin scan again, there is the the results will pretty much be the same. You're just looking for no response to determine that a port is open. If we get an RST or an ACK, uh, that means that the port is closed, right? So the port is actually saying, hey, uh, there isn't any service running here, so on and so forth. So we'll run the same thing and it gives us the same result. So you can see that this is an extremely stealthy way of running the scans. And you can uh, typically what I would recommend doing is, um, is actually running this on a port by port basis. And I'll explain that in a second. So we can also run the null scan where we are not sending any flags at all. And again, we're just, uh, Nmap is simply basing the response or the lack of a response therein uh, to actually come to a conclusion as to whether a port is open or closed. Now, uh, many of you will be saying, well, hey, uh, it's actually just displaying all the, the open ports. Like how do we know if a port is closed? And that's why I was talking about uh, analyzing the results on a port by port basis, just so you understand how this works. And a great way of doing that is by using the Nmap reason option. Now the reason option is absolutely fantastic when analyzing results that you're unsure of, or when you're trying to evade a firewall or not alert an intrusion detection system. So to do that, we simply type in reason, right, at, at the very end or wherever you want to include it within the syntax. And let's just run this scan. I'm just going to hit enter, right? And um, there we are. So you can, it actually, exp it actually proves my point. So now in addition to the state and the service, it now gives us another column telling us the reason. And uh, th again, the reason flag it tells you why or how Nmap came to a conclusion. So the reason the port is open or filtered is because Nmap did not get any response as I explained in the beginning. So let's try this with a port that is actually closed. Now I'm not sure there are any closed ports. Let's try 8080. Um, I don't think that is that is actually open. So let's see if that works. All right, there we are. So you can see now that uh, for port 8080 it tells us it's closed and it's running an HTTP, that service is an HTTP proxy and it's reset, right? So the reason why Nmap uh, knows that the port is closed is because it got an RST, it got a packet or a response with the, the RST uh, flag. And of course, this can all be analyzed within, uh, within Wireshark, right? And I'll show you that in a second. So again, just to explain or to keep things really simply, uh, these inverse TCP flag scanning does not work on Windows. It's not a reliable me uh, method of scanning or stealth scanning. It's very effective on Unix and Linux based op uh, operating systems. And again, it's just used uh, when you want to be extremely stealthy and you don't want to raise any alarms or perform any, uh, how should I say, any bandwidth heavy scans things that might alert administrators, uh, network administrators, you know, uh, you know, because Nmap scans can be extremely heavy, especially on older uh, networking equipment. But that's something we'll be covering in the future. For now, let's just uh, understand what's going on. So we're using inverse flags, right? Things that are not typical uh, in a TCP three way handshake. And of course, that is fin urgent push. And uh, again, with the fin scan, uh, you this can all be accessed within the man pages in Nmap. Uh, if I just go to the bottom here, this will actually explain it quite well uh, regarding the scan type. So the scan techniques, so you have your null scan, fin scan, and uh, your eczema scan, right? And uh, we can now exit, so that makes sense. So with your fin scan, you're only sending the fin flag. Uh, with eczema, you're sending, uh, you're sending fin, urge, and push. With the null scan, you're not sending at all, and the responses are very simple. If the port is open, you'll not get a response. If the port is closed, you'll get an RST or an ACK or an acknowledgement, right? Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of how that works, again, you can try and test this with various Linux boxes and analyze the results. And again, as I said, it's very, very useful on a, on a port by port basis. 
Um, so again, if I type in nmap and let's say I want to run Nexmas scan, this is usually more reliable because you you know you're adding it with with many more flags. Uh, and we can open up Wireshark here. Let me go back into my desktop and 192.168.1.22, I believe. And the port will just use port 8080 because I know we don't have anything running there. And I'll specify the reason. And um, we can now start up Wireshark and I'll just hit enter here. And there we are. All right, so we'll close that it was a very quick one. Okay, so let's look for TCP. So we can see, uh, we can already see the flags here that have been sent. So fin, push and urge. And immediately it's uh, the the target, which is 192.168.1.22, sends back an RST and an, an acknowledgement flag. And that means that the port is closed. And if we take a look at the response here, we can see indeed Nmap is also coming to the same conclusion that we are coming to and that is that the port is closed. So if we run this on a port that is open, like port 22, which is SSH, let me just start that again. And let me hit enter. And there we are, we'll close that back. Uh, and let's look for a response. Um, did we get a response here? No response. So there we are. So you can see, it sent it twice, and it did not get a response. And Nmap then comes to the conclusion that, hey, this port is open. But you, again, because there isn't a response to confirm this, uh, or like a SYN response, or an ACK response similar to a TCP3 handshake, that's why it has to always leave uh, or keep the, the option or the probability uh, that the, the port might also be filtered or closed for that matter, because, you know, ports can sometimes be incorrectly configured. Uh, that being said, uh, let's let me just demonstrate the null scan. And let me show you that that again, does not send any flags at all. And that's quite interesting. So uh, I will just start a new scan here and uh, say continue without saving and I'll just start the scan and there we are and I'll stop the scan now. And there we are, you can see immediately that we have no TCP flags being sent uh, in the header and uh, we don't get a response, which again tells us that the port is open. So it's again fairly simple to understand. Just to recap, again, inverse TCP flag scanning is, is a stealthy type of scan that is used uh, again to prevent uh, you know, det the detection of intrusion detection systems and to, uh, to actually keep the scan bandwidth very, very low. And uh, again, because we're not using the standard TCP flags used in the three-way handshake, it doesn't uh, you know, raise any eyebrows, so, so to say. Uh, and lastly, and last of all, this does not work on Windows. You can actually test it out for yourself. Uh, Windows does not know as an operating system how to respond or rather the TCP stack does not know how to respond to inverse TCP flags and as a result will always tell you that the ports are closed. That being said, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or if you're confused about anything, let me know in the comment section, exploit forum at forum.hackersploit.org and I'll be seeing you in the next video.